Yeah. So once again, um, reading from James 1, verse 19, says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So it's um, so a very simple instruction um, to be swift to hear, to be quick to listen, to be quick to hear, to be quick to understand, right? And um, the other two are, you know, don't be so quick in order to put forth your thoughts, your your ideas, your opinions, maybe, um, and also definitely, you know, be slow to wrath or anger. Because the wrath of man does not produce uh, the righteousness of God. What the righteousness of God would actually bring to pass, our reaction in wrath or response in anger will not bring about the same thing. Right? Though it could be injustice, though it could be you know something that is um, requiring of maybe you know we are stirred up emotionally. Right? It will not bring forth that. Right? So. Um, yeah, so swift to hear also, to hear, to understand, to hear, to analyze, to hear, to uh, really seeking to uh, get the whole picture, right? Before we actually put forth our thoughts, our opinions, our judgments, maybe, our conclusions, right? So that's the reminder that we have here. Yeah, so why don't we pray and then we'll get started, right? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this instruction. We thank you for this exhortation in your word, Lord, for us to be, Lord, slow to speak and slow to anger, but at the same time be quick to hear, to understand, Lord. And I pray that, Spirit of God, that you will enable us to do this, Lord. And even as we do this, and even as we, Lord, uh, apply it in our lives, Master, uh, may we see your righteousness being established, Father God. And in practical ways, Lord, Spirit of God, enable us, um, remind us, Lord, of this. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I went through all your, uh, all of you who had submitted. I went through your uh, uh, status update, right, of uh, where things are, and uh, yeah. Uh, so the marks also have been. Uh, I think there were a couple of those, like I think from Divya and Lubega, you had emailed it to me, so I went through that also, and uh, I have. Uh, so that since that was delayed, there's been a you know, I can't award the full marks. So I've done that. Now, um, yeah, so I, I went through it and I see that uh, for, you know, some of you, that's good progress, right? You've uh, started the work and you've kind of um, uh, gone through the thing, you know what to do and you're doing it. Uh, but for some of us, some of you, I noticed that, um, well, you really haven't started Okay, so it was. It is more like uh, this is the title. These are the you know. This is a, this is the kind of research that I'm going to do. Um, so I just want to you know tell you that this is hardly any time, maybe exactly a month, to submit the final report. Right, uh, April fourth. So just want to re request you to start doing that. Uh, I'm of course talking about the online students and also about the uh, in-person class, right? So e-learning students, your timeline is different for submission. So we will go with um, whatever has been mentioned uh, as the timeline for submission. Okay, um, okay so, um, so in today's class, I just wanted to remind you again, you know, after going through some of uh, the status updates, uh, I see that a lot of material for some of us, you know, um, a lot of material has been taken from the sources that you had cited okay, as as research. It has been copy pasted. Okay, you had uh, or you know it 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 it's, it seems like that, right? Um, from whatever sources that you had taken the information, it had been you know a large portions of it, right? So the entire research seems to be based on you know whatever you've taken. And when I ran through uh, you know the plagiarism. Uh, tests, it came as uh, you know a lot, lot of sections are plagiarized, meaning that you had actually uh, verbatim it had been lifted out and uh, used in your research. Okay, so I uh, just wanted to again you know remind you 
right? So if something is plagiarized or if something is taken from somebody's research which is already done, and if you're just you know putting it as your research, or if you're taking the contents, lifting the contents uh, from maybe books or journals or uh, periodicals which are available on the net and if you're placing it you know just copy pasting um then that would amount to plagiarism so just wanted to check that so you can actually do a check you know of your material whatever your your project report is just do a plagiarism check there are various tools available on chat gpt itself you know you can do a plagiarism check copy paste and just say, you know, do a plagiarism check, you know, and I did that for, I did that for various, um, you know, uh, updates. Then I saw that it, it just threw up various sections where it could be potentially, it was plagiarized. Okay. So, of course, you know, it also, you know, mentioned that, okay, these are from the Bible. So, therefore, it is, you know, it is quoted and it's not plagiarism. But various other sources, um, you know, it, it it was, you know, it had that potential. So, just want to remind us about that. You know, please do not do that. Okay. And I think uh, Rosalind, you had a difficulty about the format. It, I saw it. Said, so, you know, whenever you you can check with fellow students how they actually uploaded the Word doc, right? You would actually try to copy from an Excel sheet onto the Word doc, and then. So it's, it was all showing as one column, but if you you can just check with the, any of them, you know, saying how to find out how to uh, do it on the Word doc, and uh, it'll be fine, right? So you can please feel free to reach out to any of them, and uh, you know, for those uh, those kind of uh, support, right? Okay, okay. So in today's class, anything that uh, you know that was that. So that was about plagiarism. Um, yeah, and also Ribi, you've you've got those questions, okay? What I went through your thing. These are some eight or ten questions uh, that you have. That, uh, but then you know what we wanted was a status update, meaning okay, with, with regarding to those questions, uh, what work has been done, right? So that's the update. So which means if there are if only those questions are there, that that means that uh, well, uh, work has not progressed, right? So, so just wanted to ask, just wanted to encourage you to you know, start uh, working on it quickly, right? Whatever information, because yours is about st a study on the about depression of young adults uh, in India, and of course you've said mostly Tamil Nadu, so it needs to a lot of work. Like you've written some questions there, a lot of work um, on statistics, a lot of works, uh, and also uh, the biblical basis of it. You know, that's the important thing. You no, know, don't forget it. All you know, all your research, okay, whatever topics that you're doing, has to have a biblical base. You tie it back to the Word of God, right? Uh, and you're saying, okay, this is the solution. If there is a problem. You know, this is what the Word of God says. Okay, uh, this is the solution. This is the answer. Uh, you know, so that's the that's the crux of it, right? Whatever research you're doing, um, you're bringing it back to the Word of God, right? A biblical basis for it, right? So never forget that. So it can't be, um, you know, an, an academic exercise uh, without the Word of God in it, right? So. So okay, let's say statistics of depression and and so on. That is fine. Uh, yeah, that is the, the bulk of it. But then, you know, from the word of God, what is the solution? What is the answer? Um, that what is your recommendation, right? So that would bring the completion. Okay. So yeah, faster. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, some other thing that I noticed was um, I think it's um, um, yeah economic systems Leah Lama I don't know if he's um, Leah Lama is here but you know a lot of that wealth accumulation 
and in religious texts okay so that is fine now you're doing a comparative study okay what does you know the religious texts of other religions um, what do they say what do they have to say what is their opinion but you come back to the authority of god's word you know, that should be your final that should be your approach uh, is liya lama there um, okay uh, probably when he watches the video of this um, maybe he'll, he'll get to understand that so yeah so there's a lot of uh, you know comparison uh, that's fine you can you know what are the other religious texts talking about and i think uh, from hindu scriptures from islamic scriptures and so on so that's fine uh, but you come back to again you know oh, what is the word of god say and also you know um, let it be different from uh, I, i think you've made that distinction uh, difference uh, of you know uh, from whatever we had studied biblical uh, prosperity right um, and i guess there will be an overlap uh, but you kind of talking about economic systems and ancient civilizations and etc so that is fine but also just make sure that there is no plagiarism from someone else's work just want to repeat that please okay um right and um yeah so uh linden um i see that i w- went through your assessment again i mean your status uh, report so your you know some of the, the your questionnaire really needs to be um you know refined because you know some of questions like how much time do you spend on individual bible reading and prayer okay that needs to be refined like how much time time is it uh, are you referring to daily are you referring to weekly is it monthly right um so we need to refine it um and um, yeah so uh, i i guess you're you're going to be asking people in the church right so you've not made that distinction is it going to be leaders is it going to be like church um people who are congregation in the congregation so and i i also see that these are all uh very descriptive um questions right open ended questions like questions like do you believe in the term revival you know what is your opinion on revival and so on so these are all open ended so putting together and you know when you interpret the data um you need to do it right you need to do it well um so yeah i just wanted to say that um yeah and also you know you've um, you looking at okay whether that denomination is calvinistic uh, armenian in their theology and all that so maybe you should include that in your questions also right and if that has a bearing on you know being a hindrance for revival or it will be a good thing you know do they do they uh, are they of a charismatic view or cessationist view you yeah you've mentioned that but i think that should be part of the questionnaire eh? because you're talking about different uh, denominations because that is not uh, in the questionnaire right um like for example um the kind of theology the denomination believes in so you just mentioned okay do you believe in um uh, revival like what is your opinion on revival but but what are, what about their doctrinal foundations because uh, that is the topic of your research right uh denominational christian denominational divergence so there should be something uh about the denomination from which they come so the variations among the you know about the different beliefs different practices that is what you have mentioned right uh, and doctrines so in the research or in the questionnaire what is their doctrine what is their practice what do they believe on so that needs to be there very clearly right because that is the research you're not doing a um a study on you know based on the historical data you know that we know right okay this denomination uh, this is what they believe in that we know but then that particular church or that person that you're asking you need to ask these questions what is the doctrine what is the practice you know what is the thing and uh, it needs to be uh, really incisive questions right uh, an open ended uh, so so that's the thing um okay okay yeah linden thank you um success you lifted your you put your hand up i'll just come back to you i see another question so yeah so rosalyn the question is 
the inter, you know the the tabulation you know when i say tabulation it's when you actually put all the results together so that is what you tabulate the results right so so when you have a like an open ended questionnaire it's going to be difficult to tabulate it but you can so that is what i was saying right so a questionnaire when i say tabular form uh it doesn't have to be in an excel sheet you can you know just like how some of the quest questionnaires that you have or for your quizzes it can be in the same form right multiple choice quiz you, you take any assessment that we've done in the past on any subjects uh previous uh, years subjects previous semesters uh, the questionnaires were in the google form right so you can use it as the same the same manner like how it was in the google form so it doesn't have to be on an excel sheet so the, some of the questions that we had um you just look back you know maybe you look at the previous uh, question paper and see how how was it and you can use the same kind of a template same kind of a pattern so it doesn't have to be on a uh, excel sheet okay so success yes what is your question um success you put your hand up i are you you can put it on the chat or you can unmute and speak okay whenever you're ready okay good morning sir good morning yes i submitted my work my research paper but uh it's showing me that i've not submitted i don't know if you have received it sir um okay let me just check quickly um Okay, success. Mm -hmm. So this is on uh, the biblical exam uh, factors for divisions in the churches. Yeah, so it's uh, I've also marked you. I've also responded. I've received it, and I've also based on the fact that you've sent it on time. I've also um, given you the marks also. Yeah. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Okay. And success. I just wanted to, um, yeah, about your uh, research. Also, you also, you know, uh, taken a lot of material from other sources, right? Uh, so, just wanted to just tell you that uh, you need to be a little careful that you see you read the source, you could paraphrase it. Okay, and. Uh, and you could mention the cite the source like this is where it is from right but if you're going to be taking it uh, verbatim as in as it is uh, like raymond 1996 uh, you have mentioned that you know statement of the problem or christianity today you know uh, so um, so i i hope you paraphrasing it right? and not quoting it verbatim so just all those who are using these different sources probably you know you search the internet and you've come across these periodicals articles etc it's good that you're doing that but uh, just make sure that um, you know maybe it's a quote that you want to use you know somebody's quote somebody said this and you want to quote it verbatim right um, that is fine but if large chunks of uh, material you know you're going to you're going to put it um, there right there then that means that you wrote it, right? Uh, even though you've cited the, you know, the the thing. So even the sentence formation, everything is the same. Then that will amount to, that will be plagiarism, right? So if I just do a plagiarism check, then it will just show up as you know a lot of it, or it will say potential plagiarism and so on. So please, uh, just be mindful of that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Okay. Any further questions, anyone? Okay. So uh, all those who are, uh, you know, uh, you have these questionnaires and everything. So um, your, uh, you know, so the next part of your questionnaire, like you, let's say you have fifty questionnaires, you got filled in. The next part of it would be to interpret the data. 
okay so you have name age and so on so interpreting so which means um compilation is one okay so you put out all together okay so you have uh, maybe i'll just you know, like a tabular like that's a tabular column okay rosalyn so you have okay names of people names and then you put it and that you can use an excel sheet name all the names 50 names then okay then the next column could be just an example age so you put all the ages you know 10 15 whatever then the next column could be whatever gender you know male female so you put that so you've got that you know how did they respond to the first question okay that's a first that, that's another column question number 1 did they answer yes no what were the response maybe right so you got that uh, if it's a descriptive answer then then yes you have to put the answer in and then see how you can interpret that right um so so that's the thing so you put all this you've compiled it and at the end of it you are interpreting you know, it's it's easy if it's a it's a if it's like an objective kind of a thing or a close ended question um and then you will have to you know use another way to interpret the the open ended questions right so what are what are they saying and then maybe you can you can try to summarize it in maybe in a line and uh, do that so the thing is you are interpreting data you're saying okay uh boys in the age or men in the age of 25 to 45 in the age group um, living in urban urban or rural settings ha or urban settings you know uh, are undergoing stress levels uh, whatever because of their commute and uh, i'm just you know putting something so you're able to interpret it right you'll be able to looking at that data looking at this you know you're saying that a majority of of the men in this age group uh seem seems seem to have this problem and you're able to interpret and you're able to arrive at what is the cause of it right it's because they have these patterns they have these habits they have these things whatever for example you know i'm just saying so you get the questionnaire, you compile it, and you then you're able to interpret it. And after the interpretation, you're able to, you know, um, uh, um, study the issue, and from the biblical perspective, present the biblical perspective and the solution and so on. You know, this is just one scenario, one case, right? So, so just wanted to share that 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 is something that you will have to do eventually, right? After you have all the questionnaires, okay. Um, any any questions? Anything that you want to share? Um, yeah, so I think Jeffina. So yeah. So when we talk about the pages, uh, so, uh, uh, go ahead. Tell me again. When? Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about plagiarism, plagiarism. I think in my introduction, I kept few starters data from the sport, the cycle of introduction. Not in my case, the case. But only in my introduction. Mm. And I think I also mentioned the link from where I took it out. So even when we do that, do you mean that I should not be copy pasting, I should be paraphrasing the steps or see, see if it is a quotation. If it's somebody stating something, mm -hmm. obviously either you can paraphrase or you can quote it, right? See, uh, you've talked about an article uh, by BBC News yeah. and you and uh, that is fine. So the way you've written it, it's fine. Like news article published by Ajay Tomar, such as the date, states that, and and you can actually cite. You've also given the links down, so so that's fine, right? So that is fine. You're paraphrasing. You're just pointing to what was mentioned, etc. But if you are lifting entire, you know, the, the entire subject matter, the entire interview that happened, and they're putting it there, right? Then that would amount to plagiarism. Right. So yeah. So that's the. And thing. also about. Uh, I mean, I just want to know about the pattern of writing. So mm -hmm. I, I think I wrote every single case. I think I wrote three cases that I three to mm -hmm. five cases. I think. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, but I'm not sure whether I have to open it, right? Like, is this how you have to press them or you just need just a little bit of information? Because if I do 30 case studies, I'm just one thing will go out of 30 pages. Mm. Uh, so you want to be to shorten it out, just not too much details. Mm. So you don't have to put the, you know, each case, you don't have to put all the details here. Yeah, so you can you can actually see okay uh, how it happened. Let's say for example, you you you've put the findings right, age, uh, how it uh, who was the perpetrator of the crime, uh, how it happened. So if there are anything more that you you can mention there, you know uh, maybe similar economic condition uh, or anything else that you can find there, you can put that. Okay, so this can be those fields when you're compiling the all the you know, inf compilation okay you're not okay before compilation hmm, yeah i mean if if you feel if you want to and if the word if it doesn't go beyond the word limit you can no problem but the compilation the compilation matters yes because it's from this, you are actually compiling and stating it. If you want in your research to that this will actually make sense to put the entire testimony, you can. But if you feel that, okay, if I just, you know, kind of put it together and then if I just present what happened, if that makes better sense, then you can do it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so impact of the gospel. So you can also, you know, talk about how it was shared. I don't know if you found that information. Like, was it in church? Was it a co, um, you know, a friend? In what way did they receive the gospel, the means of the gospel? So that will also, you know, that's also a key factor, right? Like how they, you did? Okay. No, no, no. How how was it shared? Like, did, did they watch a program? Was it a, you mentioned that? I mean, it's a very uh, it's a general thing. If you say biblical preaching, right? I mean, if you if you want to, you know, because that's a key factor, right? You're talking about the impact of the gospel, so which means that um, you know how did the gospel reach them? So when you say biblical preaching, yes, but in what, where was it? Was it workplace? Was it workplace? Was it, uh, you know, you know, something like that? So that will be, that will also, you know, give us some thing. That, okay, uh, this, so these are the people, they've gone through this. They're in this traumatic thing. But this avenue of uh, preaching the gospel was effective in reaching that. We could find a pattern there. I'm not saying that it, you know, it will. There could be a pattern. Mm, yeah, there could be a pattern. So that's all. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Abu Bakr. Sir, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Please, I want to. Maybe there is any comments or correction on what I submitted, sir. Um, yeah, Bakr, I'm just, um, yeah. So um, yours uh, seems to be very, uh, you know, in like a academic um, oriented kind of a research, right? Uh, and uh, like uh, more leaning towards the theological research. So the concept of revel revelation. Um, so concept of revelation as such uh, in in uh, in the society so so I, I went through that um, yeah so I, I didn't kind of read it in depth but um, yeah so that's that's fine I think uh, one thing is uh, that when you talk about Nigerian society it would help to uh, give some information about like um, yeah, what is the what is it like? You know, so the so the research can actually state something like that. Um, mention that you know what what is the 
you know why 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 you know when you say typically in nigerian society you know why is it uh what is it different you know the whole revelation and the concept of revelation and understanding scripture etc you know uh, obviously you're saying okay uh, nigerian society is like this and maybe there are some challenges and maybe there are some you know whatever so um it will help to if you expound a little bit explain a little bit about the general world view of a nigerian contemporary nigerian society it would help so that's i would say probably that's that's something that you could mention right um yeah and uh, see also um yeah uh, you're just clarifying some of these terms uh, etc that's fine um but um, yeah i think some more insight into nigerian society because i'm not able to you know uh, understand like why specifically is there anything that is very distinctive or very different about nigerian society that uh, you know that you are saying that okay this this whole idea of revelation um you know that uh, that could be different for a nigerian society you know so so that's something that i guess you need to explain for us yeah then it'll be good and a little more structured also okay yeah uh, yeah paul and then divya also um, i hope that helps uh, abubakar Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Paul, you have any question, and then after that, Divya. Uh, yes, I, I'm sorry to pop in. I thought you are moving systematically, person to person. Uh, my concern also, I wanted to hear a comment on what I've submitted. Thank uh -huh. you. Okay. Okay. Um, let me just check. Okay. Um, yeah. so same uh, i think it's a similar thing uh, paul because you need to talk about uh, the um, the you know the moroto community uh, in uganda talk about that um, and i think you've done that you kind of mentioned that uh, so yeah so specifically just get into some details right uh, and it's uh, i think fairly um, i mean clear research title believers participation you know uh, why what is the uh, why are they participating what are the challenges for not participating etc so yeah just continue with that and also uh, you know some of these things i think terminologies and this, i think probably you used a template for you know a research paper template because it says you know statement of the problem objectives of study general objectives specific objectives etc you see you know if it's really relevant for your title okay and then you can get into it um otherwise you don't have to go into all these you know kind of headings um you can keep it simple yeah okay thank you right. you're welcome okay um divya yeah you wanted to say something yeah thank you pastor um i just wanted to know like a uh, feedback as well as um uh, a question um mm -hmm. just, uh, like a follow up on some comments that you had given uh, others so you mm -hmm. were talking about a biblical perspective right yeah. so in 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 the research that i'm doing um i'm already stating that it can be used ai can be used for christian missions mm. so i don't ha do i have to like explore the question like uh, is it good uh, for uh, uh, to use ai in christian mission the, like a biblical perspective of that uh, when you say biblical perspective in in, in terms mm. of this topic uh, yeah. can you can you let me know what what exactly i need to do well yeah, yeah i mean i think the, your topic is uh, it is you know it, it, it you are actually uh, 
based on the premise that yes, you are doing this for ministry. So that itself is, uh, you know, your the, the Great Commission or discipling or whatever it is. Uh, you know, this tool, and now it's going to be used for ministry. So and I think that premise is covered completely. So so you don't have to worry about that. Like you know, you mentioned like Bible translation, children's ministry, etc. So it's 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 fine. So maybe you can, yeah, you can look at the dangers of it. You can look at, uh, I, I guess you will, right? Um, yeah. Drawbacks, limitations, dangers, and, and etc. Yeah. And uh, and I guess uh, like relying on a method rather rather than the, uh, you know, the uh, or too heavily on the, you know, we use the method, but um, is it at the cost of substituting? Uh, the presence and power of God, or uh, you know, the uh, the knowledge of the Word, etc. Uh, uh, relationship or intimacy with God. So you know, is there a danger that can be uh, where it, there will be a substitution of it? So, so things like that. Yeah. So yeah, but but gentle approach and everything is fine. You can just go ahead with it. No problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay. Um. Anyone else? Anyone? Okay. So good. Uh, yeah, I hope you're having a good time uh, doing this and also spread out your efforts through the you know through the week. Don't let it pile up. So that's the thing. You know, just do maybe uh, like John C. Maxwell says. You know. Uh, about writing books, uh, somebody asked him, "How do you manage to write so many books?" He's written so many books, right? Leadership, and uh, so he says, "I just make sure that I sit down every day and uh, write. Uh, make sure that I write one line at least. That's it. You know. So he just says he discipline him, disciplines himself to just write one line, if at all. You know. And uh, that's the thing. So yeah, the same way, uh, just spread out. Make sure that." Uh, you at least read up something, or you know, uh, write something to it, or get some questionnaire filled in, something like that. So um, spread it out so that it doesn't pile up. Because when it piles up, and then we have limited time, and then we're not able to spend enough time on it. You know, so the quality of the work suffers. So that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Yeah, Zilitoli, Divya. I just see your comments. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll wind up. Yeah. Okay. God bless. So we'll catch up again. Probably, if you have more questions, just jot it down, and we can, you know, uh, we can discuss it in our next class, right? Okay. Thank you. All the very best. God bless. Bye bye.